today we are no longer in Colorado but we're gonna continue our trend I should say of talking about gruesome mass murders but today's story is going to come from Alabama I am talking about the 2009 mass murder committed by Michael Kenneth McClendon in South Alabama. This has been a horrifying afternoon and evening for a lot of residents in southern Alabama. We want to bring you the latest now on a shooting spree that ended a short time ago. Officials in southern Alabama, right near the border of Florida in Geneva, are reporting at least seven people killed and an eighth, the gunman, apparently at a, uh, a number of different incidents that happened late this afternoon. Today we will travel, we, we will start where he started that massacre at, and we will finish where it all ends. I guess there's nothing left to do but to get right into it. We are out in the middle of the peanut and cotton fields of the wiregrass area of South Alabama. We are gonna start this video out off of this desolate back road here in Kinston, Alabama, in South Alabama. As you, I mean, there's nobody out here. There's no activity whatsoever. Everything seemed fine until the day of March the 10th of 2009. Right here behind me, there used to be a house on this lot. As you can tell, it's no longer there. Michael Kenneth McClendon started his killing spree out right here on the house that used to be in this lot. This used to be his mother's house. He was raised in this house right here. On March the 10th of 2009 though, it was about 3.30 in the afternoon. He shot his mother and killed her and their family dogs and then set this house on fire, which is why there's no longer a house on this lot here behind me. Little did the small rural area of South Alabama know after he killed his mom and torched this house 10 more people would die within the next hour making it the worst mass murder in Alabama's history he snapped on this day because he was depressed he had a job but his career wasn't where he wanted it to be then there's a lack of work down here in South Alabama there's a lack of careers if you want a career you have to be a farmer or you have to go outside of this area at one point he tried to join the Marines and they officially denied him he did not pass the physical exam so he come back and he tried to be a police officer here in the town of Kinston and he went to the police academy in Montgomery where he was kicked out because he could not pass the physical exam we have identified that in 2003 he was briefly employed as a police officer in Sampson but failed to complete required training at the police academy in Montgomery. He also said he was depressed because in a note police found after all of this was over he said that his mother was ill and her family wasn't helping her enough. He had to worry about it all. Police said that he was not obsessed with guns, even though he had an AR-15, an SKS, a 12-gauge shotgun, and a pistol. He wasn't obsessed with guns, police said, but he was obsessed with shooting. He enjoyed shooting the guns and how it felt when he shot them. They found multiple letters after it was all over with, 
and one of them he said that it had all started with a legal issue that was going on over a family bible he wanted a an old family bible and some of his mother's family members would not give it to him that really started the whole thing he was really upset and really distraught over not being able to have that family bible in the note he said that she had suffered enough and so had he in that same note he also stated that he had planned to do this at a later day he wasn't planning to do it on March the 10th but on that day his mother had gotten suspended from her job only suspended she was going to be able to go back but she had gotten suspended from her job and I guess that set him off he quit his job immediately left and decided to shoot people in the streets while he laughed after setting his mother's house on fire he then proceeded and headed up the road this way towards downtown Kinston, Alabama. There's literally nothing out here. The killer then drove to this home right here. This is where he killed the majority of his victims. In fact, he killed five of his victims there. They were his uncle, two of his cousins, and a state trooper's wife and their infant child who was visiting. His aunt was also home, but she was inside of the house fixing drinks for everyone. He only killed those people who were out on the porch. He then walked across the street over to this home right here where his grandmother lived he shot and killed her right there inside of this house this was the home of a police officer scott ayers who his wife and infant daughter were killed they were over visiting the mcclendon house after killing his family he pulled out this way onto Y Street. It was here on Y Street where he shot James Sterling as he was trying to run away from the shooter. After shooting James Sterling in the back, he drove out onto Main Street here. We are now in downtown Sampson, Alabama. And Michael McClendon, he rode up and down this road right here beside us. This is Main Street. Just randomly firing his gun out of his window into buildings all over this road. I will say, now I don't know if this is something that's happened recent or if it's because of the 2009 shootings. There is a very, very, very heavy police presence here in the small little town. The population is not that large, but the police presence here is amazing i have seen probably 30 police officers different officers and just a couple of minutes i've been here just driving up and down the roads in fact there's a bench right out in front of the police department that says in loving memory of the ones we lost on march 10th 2009 up here ahead of us there's a sign there for the inland gas station he shot two people there michael mccullough was shot and injured but survived Sonia Smith who worked there at the inland was shot and killed that day after killing Sonia Smith at the inland station right there behind us he headed up Main Street this way randomly just firing into businesses all up and down this road in all of the news reports that were coming out at the time you can see all of the media standing on this side of the road with their cameras pointing over to the Bradley hardware, the Bradley True Value, which had bullet holes all in the glass. It was 30 minutes from the time that the fire department responded to the fire at his mother's home before the first shots fired call came in to the Alabama State Troopers office in Dothan, Alabama. He continued driving straight up Main Street, which turns into Alabama State Highway 52. This is where the police started pursuing him, and he led them on a 24-mile police chase 
from downtown Sampson to Geneva, Alabama. It was right here on this road where he shot and killed Bruce Malloy, and they have even erected a cross here in his memory. It was right here on Highway 52 in front of the Walmart where the police attempted to do a pit maneuver. McClendon emptied a 30 round clip from his SKS into the police chief's car, only hitting him in the arm. It happened right there on that road, right in front of the Walmart sign. McClendon drove his little truck down to this building right here in front of us. He was familiar with that place. This is the Reliable Products building. He was familiar with it because he used to work there. He pulled into the parking lot, went into the building where he had a gunfight with the police officers that were chasing him. A few minutes later, police hear gunshots ring out from inside of the building. They enter the building to find him laying on the inside, dead from a gunshot wound. They found Michael McClendon's body inside of the Reliable Products warehouse at 417. It all began at 330, which means it lasted just under an hour for the entire thing. After the grisly scene there at the Reliable Products building, police went to try to piece together what happened? South Alabama had never had anything like this happen to it before at all. A radio station in Andalusia, Alabama, which is not too far from here, raised over $47,000 to pay for the burial of all 11 people, counting Michael McClendon. Right now, I am at Meadow Lawn Cemetery in Enterprise, Alabama. His victims are all buried right here with the exception of him. Preparing to come make this video, I was looking for his gravesite and it is not listed anywhere. I found his mother's, everybody he shot at the house. I found him here, but I can't find his. That is going to end this video on the murderous killing spree of Michael Kenneth McClendon. I want to thank you all for watching this episode and I hope you have a great day.